Good morning, class. I am Chemical A. Suga, your science teacher. Before we start our class, we're going to have a prayer. Janelle, can you lead a prayer, please? Amen. Now, let's check your attendance. Okay, everyone is present. By the way, yesterday, what is our topic? Anyone who can answer? Very good. Our topic yesterday is all about the phenotype and the genotype, genotype of an organism. Before we proceed to our topic, um, I have a few questions for you. Um, what is heredity means? Anyone? Janelle? Okay. Um, Leia? Very good. So, heredity means the sum of the characteristic and potentialities genetically derived from one's ancestor. For example, if your parents or your grandparents have blonde hair, there are possibilities that your future children or your future grandchildren have a blonde hair too. Um, next, the transmission of such qualities from ancestor to descendants through genes. Now, why is it occurred in every living things? Anyone? In your own idea, what? Why? Why it occurred in every living things? Okay. So, for me, um, it's occurred in every living things because that's the way we're God given to us, right? Now, with this question, what is our topic for today? Or uh, guess what? Anyone? Mm, close enough. Okay. Next slide. Um, our topic for today is all about Mendel's law of heredity. Now, at the end of the lesson, the students are expected to identify its concept, describe the importance, especially in the field of genealogy, and also draw and label the law of heredity through Punnett Square. Now, in continuation with our topic yesterday, or the connection between the topic yesterday, there are there has three types of Mendel's law. They are Mendel's law of segregation, Mendel's law of independent assortment, and Mendel's law of crossbreed and dihybrids. Before we go deeper, um, let us define first the following term. Homozygous of an organism in which both copies of a given gene has the same allele. Heterozygous of an organism which has two different alleles of a given gene. And allele, one of the number of alternative forms of the same gene copying given position on a chromosome. Now we are done defining the term, so now let's proceed to the first law of Mendel, which is the law of segregation. Now, it states that individual passes two allele and a parent passes only one allele to his or her offspring. Now, for their future offspring, the parents must contribute one allele for, for them to create um, an offspring with two copies of allele. A father contributes um, one gametes or a sperm. So a sperm must consist one allele and also a mother has uh, a gametes or an egg. We contribute one allele also. So that's why there in this we have um, a flower. So a father has two allele and also a mother has two allele also. So a parent, future offspring has is either two copies of homozygous allele or it's either two but two recessive allele which come up with this. Now let's proceed to the second law of Mendel, which is law of independent assortment. Uh, it states that the inheritance of one pair of factors genes is independent of the inheritance of the other pair. If the two allele are independent and identical, the individual is called homozygous. Or for the traits, if the two alleles are 
difference the individual called heterozygous. Now, with this example, um, we have a pea flower. Um, the pea flower has a dominant B allele and also the protein he has also a recessive allele which is small letter B. So, and also the other parents has also a heterozygous allele which is a B capital B and also a small letter B. So, the future outcome with this is the offspring has, may also have is either homozygous or the capital B and B which is the same identical allele. Or it's either they have a recessive homozygous allele which is recessive. Um, we have a white flower which represents the small letter B so the P plant is also have a white flower. Now, same with this outcome. So, next, we proceed to Mendel crossbreed and Deg hybrids. So, with these Deg hybrids, the found the traits were inherited independently for each other. So, this time, there has two characteristics. So, there, hey, there are the parents have a two characteristic which has a round and yellow. And the other one is wrinkled and green. So, with the parent, the father, for example, um, there has a dominant trait which has round and yellow and the recessive traits of the other parents or the mother which has a wrinkled and green. So, since the father is the dominant, so the future of, the future of spring may have a heterozygous but dominant. So the the phenotype or the physical appearance of a offspring same with the father. This time we have a three types of dominance. So we have a complete dominance, which is complete dominance is a for is form of dominance in heterozygous condition wherein the allele that is regarded as dominant completely masked to the effect of the allele what is recess that is recessive so this time um they are the parents have both homozygous but the father or example the mother has a dominant trait which is red and the small letter r here represents the white pigmentation of a rose so which is recessive traits now this time all of his offspring all of their offspring rather has a red or red pigmentation of a flower but they are not a homozygous in nature because they have recessive traits came from their parent or their example their mother so that's why they have recessive traits but the dominant color of or the phenotype or the physical appearance of a flower is red now here comes the incomplete dominance. So, incomplete dominance is when phenotype of a two parents blend together to create a new phenotype for their offspring. For example, here, here comes the another plant, which is the flower again. Now, we have a parent which is homozygous, identical red allele, and also the other parent says a homozygous recessive allele or white so they contribute a gametes um the gametes has a recessive trait which is small letter r and the uh, dominant trait which which is capital r so but this time um there's no dominance happen here instead it's combined or it percent it represents another phenotype which which represents a pink color coloration colorization of a flower so another example is of incomplete dominance is these horses if a if a horse has a if a father horse has a chestnut brown and the mother has a creamy white um their future offspring has a palomino or combined pigmentation of a chestnut brown and a creamy white now let's proceed to codominance so in this codominance 
we're not two parents phenotypes are expressed together in an offspring. So this time, um, the phenotype of a mother and a father appear in the same offspring. Now that's how co-dominance works. So class, do you understand anything we discussed for today? Anyone? Okay, good. If there is no further question, um, let's proceed to the activity. So our activity, um, create a table, fill in the possible outcome of this illustration below. So you have a red cow and a white cow. So answer it in a one whole sheet of paper. Uh, I give you five minutes to do it. Anyone? So pass the paper. So if you really understand our our discussion, answer the following question, and I'll give you ten minutes again and answer it in one whole sheet of paper. Now time's up. Anyone? Pass the paper. So for your assignment, um, in a one half sheet of paper, explain the importance of Mendelian law of heredity in sustaining the needs of mankind, especially in agriculture. So that's all for today's class and thank you.